What up, town? Go ahead. Shoot your shit. Talk your shit. <laughs> man, I got to Hey, man. Yeah, man. I got a chance to observe uh, that weirdo. Uh, is so mediocre. It ain't even funny. That dude, when he fight real competition, he go get fucked up. One dimensional. Doesn't hardly use the jab. Straight up head hunter. I'll tell you right there, when he go up in competition, he go get exposed. That's why Oscar said he ain't ready for Tank Davis. Cause Tank will plow his ass. Mm. And yeah, I wasn't impressed at all. I just decided to look at the kid just to get a uh, glimpse of him and um I don't see nothing special about him. Mm. I'm just gonna be completely honest with you. He need to prove a lot of things. <laughs> Before, I was just laughing at the fact they were saying, oh, you got to be the next Oscar De La Hoya. Was that a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> I mean, shoot, you sure you want Oscar De La Hoya? <laughs> I, I, for real. I mean, I see that little video that he put out. I don't know what the fuck was up with that. Oh, the dancing you know? video? Funny man, hey man, I, no time. The kid is young. He young man. I don't know. He, he, he a young man. He, excuse, he's a young man finding himself. You know. Although we still have to hold him to the standard of a professional fighter because he's nineteen or twenty. You understand? But you know. But uh. But yeah, I don't. Oh yeah, he, he's not ready. Man, Tank Davis is a full blown one thirty guy. Full blown strong one thirty guy. And and the Tank Davis that I saw a couple of weeks ago in New York, very disciplined, very smooth, very fluid, takes his job serious, no mess, went, went into the ring and literally destroyed a former WBA world champion. Come on, man. Like, I mean, people can say they moved them up in weight, but you don't walk through a tough Mexican fighter who was a world champion and with with only one one or two losses on his two losses on his record. So he's he was still a fresh guy, you know. Uh and Quayar, if you go back to my interviews, he goes up to one seventy after fights. One sixty, one seventy or something like that. It was like forty pounds or something. He was squeezing into one twenty six. So uh um uh so Tank Davis is a full blown grown one thirty. And uh he's only looking up at one man, uh Lomachenko. But but as I digress back to Ryan Garcia, man, he's a he's a fr- man, he's a little kid. In, in terms of how he fights too, he's a little kid, you know? Them slappy left hooks and uh, you know, he's not he's not the next coming of anything, but He's gonna be real marketable, and they gonna move him along very, very slow, town. Oh yeah, I, I, I can see a bunch of. Uh, I can see the same thing with him that they're gonna do what they've been doing with Triple G, and it sure seems to be a lot of these boxers putting up weird old videos. You know, Anthony Joshua got a video of him dancing like Michael Jackson, which is weird within itself. But yeah. seeing a seeing a six foot six dude trying to moonwalk and shit, but okay, mm-hmm. you know, okay, well, look, and before, I'm giving Lomachenko his credit, which, like I said before, friend, I, I like fucking with Lomachenko fans, because every time I do a video about him, they're stupid enough to watch the video, talking shit, thinking that they doing something to me when they actually <laughs> making me money, uh-huh. so... The joke is really on them, but I do mean everything I say about Lomachenko. But I will say this, Fred. Uh, Lomachenko is a very good fighter. But I will say this. I keep telling people, and I stand by this statement, it is better for Lomachenko to try to fight, fight Tank now. Because I don't think... For sure. I, think, I do not think he will have a chance against Tank if he tries to fight a Tank is, will fuck him up. So for Lomachenko's sake... He need to get him in the ring now. I know everybody keep talking about Lomachenko's uh, super duper skills, but Lomachenko don't do nothing that I haven't seen before. Uh, it, it's what I'm saying is Lomachenko. When I eat he gonna be in for a rude awakening. He gonna see power. He gonna see strength. 
he goes, he, man, I'm, like I keep telling you, if Tank lands something on Lomachenko, they're going to be picking Lomachenko up off the ground because Lomachenko, as I said before, I'm waiting to see how he reacts if he fights an aggressive fighter, that pins an uh, aggressive young fighter like Tank Davis that can put pressure on him, pin him against the ropes, because we get to see how Lomachenko reacts fighting off the ropes. Mm -hmm. Because look, Lomachenko is great in the middle of the ring, the way that dude can like get in and get out and move on the other uh, and be on the other side of you before before you know it. But as I said before, Fred, the real test is gonna be when he fights a dude that's aggressive that can walk him down. Yeah. See, we haven't saw that. We haven't saw that yet. Because you see what happened. And he had a lot of trouble with Salido. You can bring up the low blows all you want, but he struggled against Salido. Yes, he almost stopped him, but he had a very difficult time. And that's what I'm saying. He still has a loss on his record, Fred. I'm not saying a dude with one loss is the best fighter on the planet and got less than 15 fights in. But as I said before, Lomachenko, Lomachenko is good. But... And I'm going to tell you right now, Fred, I would favor him over a lot of fighters between, I'll say, one, you know, 120 and one, 130. I just don't think 140 is a good look for him. No, 140. No, no, no. Pro Gray is there. Pro Gray is, is, is a strong, young, and, alpha and male to, type. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Mm -hmm. He ain't that. See, Fred, people want me to understand this about Lomachenko. When me and you say this, it, it isn't because we want him to not succeed and it isn't because he's not black, but I'm just being... Mm. I lost you. Town. Yeah. Okay, Gad, yeah, you got to start that over again. Yeah, you got to start over. What, 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 where are you? Just tell me where to pick up at. Uh, what are you talking about? Uh, Lomachenko being critical of Lomachenko. No, no. Oh, okay. Well, all I was saying, Fred, is he's a very talented fighter. But as I keep saying, I look at him. I, I look at him, and I looked at him. His size versus R Ringo. Ringo is small, and Lomachenko is small, too. And I just don't think 140 would be a good look for him because, like I said, he going he to run into some serious power. And I just don't think he can withstand fighting those type of dudes because to me, he doesn't have serious punching power. Do you know what would happen to him if it would progress? Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, that answers it. That answers it. Pro Gray is a bad son of a gun, man. Yeah. And, and, and I know people go sit up here and say, look, oh, Chico can beat everybody. No, he can't. He, he can't beat everybody. Fight. Now, let's say this. He, he's not going to, like, walk through Lomachenko. Like, I don't think he'll, but I think his power is just a little bit too much. And, and, and just from the standpoint of how they fight, you know, like, you know, people think when you pick winners, you think like, oh, he's like 10 times better than the person. You know, you only got to be one time better or two time better or three time better. But I think Pro Gray gives Lomachenko some problems at 140. You know, I, I, I really do. I really, really do. Go ahead, Town. Town. Yeah, can you? Oh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, go ahead. What I'm saying is, I look at that dude. Yeah, Lomachenko would look okay for the first couple of rounds, but I just think eventually dude would start overwhelming him and just, like, start walking him down. Lomachenko, come on, Fred. He don't have no, no real punching power. You know, he make dudes quit because, you know, he throws a lot of punches and stuff, but he doesn't have any power. And then, keep in mind, he keeps fighting dudes that have, like, three fights within... You know, within three years, like I said, he fought Gary Russell Jr. Gary Russell Jr. is very inactive. Gary Russell Jr. have only fought four times in like the last four years. The dude and Ringo barely had fought. And not to mention he was 
And Lomachenko is a small dude, Fred. If you look at that, oh, I know he's small. I, 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 very small. I mean. He's way that's smaller than I mean. me, in terms of I mean. in terms of thickness. Yep, you're right. You you mean to tell me that he gonna be able to go up to 140 and 147 and try to fight those dudes at at, at, one, at 140 and 147 and have success? I don't see it that way because, like I said. It's only so 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 many weight classes that you can pull that shit in. Mm-hmm. I, look, look, Fred, as good as Floyd and as good as he, he was, there's no way that Floyd could have went up to like 168. I didn't do yeah, like Floyd's that. a small guy. Floyd, Floyd is smaller than me, like in, in terms of thickness. You know what I mean? He's, 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 okay, he's, and that's what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. It isn't because Floyd ain't skill, a skillful fighter, but come on, man, let's just cut the crap. It ain't no way Floyd could have fought that. I barely think Floyd could have fought. To be honest with you, and you know I've seen Floyd in person. I look like a giant compared to Floyd. So you mean to tell me that Floyd would have been able to fight in, 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 one, in 175? No, that's not. Nah, Floyd can't fight no 175. Yeah, exactly. And Bernard Hopkins was talking about, oh, I can make, uh, give me eight months and I can make 147 for Floyd. That's That would have been absurd. I mean, we just got to keep it 100. I mean, basically when we say pound for pound, we say pound for pound as far as dominating certain weight classes. We don't mean all Weight classes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the weight class. That's funny as hell. Yeah, they don't mean. They, I mean, of course, Floyd can't fight heavyweight. We mean all the weight. This person has fought in up to where he's fighting now. We don't mean Floyd can go fight at cruiserweight and fight somebody like Tony Bellew or, or Anthony Joshua because that would never happen. Sure. And people need to get, yeah, people get that mis- misconception when we say pale for pale. We don't mean, we mean pale for pale for that fighter at the current weight class he's in and where he started at. We don't mean, oh yeah, Floyd can go up to 168 and he can fight, you know, no. I, I just think we get that mixed up and that's what I'm saying about, and that's the point that I was trying to make about Lomachenko. We being, we being factual. We're not saying Lomachenko sucks as a fighter, we just saying it's limitations for him. He ain't, he won't survive at 140 or 147 and his fans can, get, I know right now, they're going to, right now, as they watching this video, or when they watch this video, they gonna, you're going to see somebody, oh, oh, oh Fred, oh, tell, well, he, he can beat anybody. Lomachenko is the, the greatest thing, man. He he can beat anybody, man, even at 147. One, I know it's going to be one idiot that's going to say he can beat Sean Porter, or he can beat Errol Spence, or he can beat those type of dudes. Watch. You're I right. guarantee it. And, and that just goes to show you their lack of knowledge for boxing. So, you know, but, but friend, we, we can move on to the subject at hand, the fight that you are about to attend. First of all, I'm... <laughs> <laughs> You're funny, man. You're funny. I'm, I'm just keeping it... I'm just keeping it... Whatever. I'm shocked that you got press credentials for this fight. Me too. I'm way I'm, shocked. I couldn't believe it. Well... Well, it's because Tom Loeffler had so much pressure on him to give you a press credential because the question is, why wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you, Brad, maybe you was talking about you going to send a, a letter from your lawyer to him. Shit, nobody don't want to deal with that shit. No, no one don't. No one don't. And 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 Because I damn sure was. Maybe I would have waited one more fight, you know what I mean, But to get revoked. But I, I definitely would have sent him a letter for sure. No doubt in my mind. No doubt. Well, sometimes because someone got to set the precedent, and it's not about me, and 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 I'm not begging to go to a triple G fight, but but, but I think you got to stand on something. You know, you, you definitely got to stand on something. I don't want them believing that believing that they can do this to the next Frederick Hawthorne that's coming. You understand what I'm saying? It's not. It's just not fair, and it's not right. You know, everyone has their agenda in terms of being a media outlet. You know, what I mean, and my job. 
I'm very clear in my objective, you know, and uh, I'm not gonna let people just walk over, walk over our, walk over our plight, you know what I mean, and manipulate and use it to make them better, you know. So, you know, but exactly. But go ahead, Triple G. Well, uh, yeah, you're on I, Triple G. Before, yeah, before we move to Triple G, I just gotta say I see your interview with Don King. Same old Don King. Uh, Still making up words, still uh-huh. talking around a subject, and I really, after a while, Fred, I just really tuned him out because me too. Question, I just it just turned into a whole bunch of nothing. Well, if you if you look at the fact that uh, if you look at Donald Trump, he's done so much because he's put his life on the line. But what? <laughs> But at the end of the day, it was like, man, it's just too much, Don. Don, you're doing too much. And it's such a contradiction supporting him, right? It's such a contradiction supporting Donald Trump when you're talking about the black agenda in terms of police brutality. Black people not seeing seeing as equals in this country. But Don, but Donald Trump is the best thing since sliced bread, it's ridiculous. It's, it's, uh, Man, you forgot to act them. I wish I would have been there. You should have said, "Well, you should have said this." Well, if, if Donald Trump had so much for the minority, how come this dude been sued? Him and his dad been sued for oh yeah racism for not not wanting to rent the blacks. The alleged tapes that Tom Arnold. Claims to have of him using the N word, all these sexual allegations. Sure. So, I'm, yeah, I was just dying laughing. <laughs> I just started cracking up. I just started tuning him out because he started say, saying all that crazy shit about, uh, about see, what, what, what was going on with Kanye? He just messed up with the slavery part. But all the other news, what? He just, oh man, you gotta stop. And this is why I said. Yeah, he's he's special. Man, you made sacrifices. How, how the fuck you made sacrifices when you was born rich? Huh. I mean, yeah, uh, yeah, I just had the two Don King out. Me Back too. Day, I, I was doing town. I was doing the interview and I was tuning him out. And I thought, yeah, I could. It, it, you could tell that, right? And I thought. I was trying. I was going to try and bring it home then because I know him and Malcolm X were friends, right? I know the Don King story, you know, and uh, so I was like, man, Malcolm X wouldn't be proud of you right now, man. And I was trying to make him feel how I was feeling. Uh, you know, what I mean, I-, I wanted him to have that feeling of like, damn, of disappointment, you know, because man, yeah, I, I would have asked him. I would have said, you put together some of the greatest fights in history back in the 70s and the 80s but every fighter that you had under your wing that you worked with from to Bernard Hopkins they all were dissatisfied with you and you need to answer that question and what about the so called money drawer that you had that you I mean and I wish you would have further asked him about him trying to put a hit out on Bob Arum see that's what I would have been interested in because he allegedly said that he tried to put a hit out on Bob Arum. Mm-hmm. So that, that's what I would have been interested in. Like, why did all your fighters leave you very unhappy? Mike Tyson, Bernard Hopkins, Larry Holmes, Muhammad Ali. Um, you, you know, um, he had quite a bit of fighters. He had some of the best fighters that ever lived. But why did they all leave your stable unhappy and they all said the same thing that you cheated them out of millions of dollars? That's what what I need for him to explain. Yeah. Because we want to know. Oh, we do. You're absolutely right. Yeah, so I mean, they can make, I, I just want to know what led him to where he felt like he needed to put a hit out on Bob Arum. He That's was. what I, I would. Yeah. He wouldn't answer that but, question. You'd have to ask him in a clever way. Like you'd have to like like why like lead him with the answer. Like like, like you know the information. You know what I mean? He wouldn't answer that shit just off the cuff. Oh, Fred, I'm I'm, I'm studying you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, 
time to get prepared for next month. Uh-huh. So, because I got some shit. I'm, I'm going to try to bombard quite a few people who ever show up at that fight. <laughs> You know, yeah, it's not going to um, be too many, but but the great thing is you'll have full access. And there's a lot of fighters in Vegas, so they'll all be at the fight. You know what I mean? Terrence Crawford brings brings them out. You know, Terrence Crawford is a top five fighter in the world, man. Maybe top three, you know? So, so I mean, you got to pay respects think, to that. I have him, I have him, I have him number one. I, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel like, the reason why I didn't say one, because I don't feel like, I don't, I don't like people disagreeing in the comment section, wasting their Saturday oh, disagreeing. Hey, hey, you know, people in the comment section. Huh? Hey, to you people in the comment section, fuck y'all. Uh, <laughs> Terrence Crawford is number one because he's, hey, unlike Lomachenko, he did. He fought more than 15 fights. He got more knockouts than Lomachenko got fights, and he was undisputed. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he's him, him. And Errol Spence, you can make an argument about who may possibly be number one, number two, and if Wilder can get, and if Wilder can get Anthony Joshua, and he flat lines. That's what I say. Joshua, they don't give heavyweights credit, but I think Deontay Wilder deserves to be on the pound for pound list. Like he, he on my pound for pound list. He's been on my pound for pound list. I, I, I tell people that all the time. Man, I, I did videos about this like nine months to a year ago. Like. Heavyweights don't get enough credit, man, and especially in the style in, in which he's, as you say, flatlining him. Shit, you know, like he's doing a shit. He, he's, oh my god, yeah. And who, who the hell you know that's that can knock out? And people can sit up here. See, this is where I catch people and they lies, and this is where I'm able to eat the people because you sit up here and you say Deontay Wilder haven't fought, fought anybody, but then he tried to fight everybody and they mama. He's trying to fight the so-called best heavyweight opposite him, mm-hmm. and it seems to be a lot of technicalities going on, and it's getting proven every day more and more that Eddie Hearn is the dude that's holding up this fight, that's fucking up this fight for everybody. From everybody from Frank Warren to Shelly Finkel, you know, is saying that Eddie Hearn is the problem. I even think to the point to where just ready to get this ass whooping over with. Like I said, how can you be upset when you get knocked out, but then when you wake up, you know, you got fifty million dollars mm-hmm. in your bank account. You're right. So I mean, it's a it's a win win situation for for Anthony Joshua. Look, we all was laughing at Conor McGregor when Floyd beat his ass and damn near, uh, you know, gave him. Uh, yeah, I read that article. Tour. Yeah, I read that article. Yeah, yeah, we all was laughing because it was funny at the time, and we was like jumping for joy. But at the end of the day, Conor McGregor walked away with like an absurd amount of money, like a hundred million dollars. Yeah. So at the end of the day, he got the last laugh. So I mean, if you getting paid handsomely to get your ass whooped or get or get the shit beat out of you, you still winning. Yeah. So we can we can talk all the shit we want because, like I said, if I was a professional boxer, yeah. So be getting knocked out or whatever the case may be, I'm going to be like, yeah, but I'm a, a nigga that got knocked out and I can, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I can buy, it, 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 and I can buy me pretty much anything that I want. So, at the end of the day, these dudes, these dudes is winning. But Deontay Wilder should be in most people's pound for pound. I know for some reason everybody wanted to be Anthony Joshua, but... Sorry, D- Whoever wins that fight is a top five pound for pound fighter. Well, I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now. Um, what we? If if, if if knocks Anthony Joshua out cold, you gotta elevate him to to at least top three, possibly because he knocked out the second. He knocked out the so called best heavyweight opposite him. Mm-hmm. He already took care of Ortiz. I don't, there's no reason for him to fight Parker as of right now. If those two guys lock horns and whoever prevails, yeah, you have to put them in the top five pound for pound list. Because one, <laughs> because one, they heavyweights. Yep. Uh, heavyweight, uh, heavyweight should always, uh, you know, heavyweight was the cream of the crops in the, you know, in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, even in the early 90s. 
So you always got to have that heavyweight in there, in the top, in, in, in the pale for pale. You know, keep in mind, Mike Tyson was considered a former uh, number one pale for pale. Uh, Muhammad Ali, Larry Holmes, all those dudes were considered top five pale for pale fight at one time. Mm-hmm. You know, they eventually fell off, but people can come up with all the excuses on why he ain't shit and, uh, and, and, and all that, but at the end of the day, he a pound for pound uh, top 10 fighter, because like I said, you got Triple triple G in there, and he, and I said before, this dude then got praised for fighting every footlocker manager you can think of, so, you know, <laughs> so, I mean, for real, this dude did got credit for beating up all these these uh, in and out workers, in and out, in and out burger workers. You know, I'm saying gas station attendants and Uber drivers and shit. But then you say Deontay Wilder ain't fought nobody, mm. but Deontay Wilder out of 40 fights, he didn't knock out 39 motherfuckers. Well, only one person went 12 rounds with him, and he knocked his ass out in the rematch. Yeah. So you, before the guy people, before the guy threw or landed a punch. Exactly. I mean he got I mean he got ready to do. Yeah. And um but you know, Fred, at the end of the day, um I really don't see how you can sit up here and go to this this dope of a fight with a strip. Go to this what? This what? This what? Go to this joke of a fight and watch this with a straight face. Yeah, it's, it's, you're right. You're right. You're absolutely right. I can't, I, I can't believe we living in the era, then again, yes I can. We living in an era where people really try to dumb us down. Because Abel, Abel Sanchez and Tom Loeffler is really doing the boxing fans a disservice by trying to sell us this as a legitimate fight. This is a protection fight. This is a fight protect him from basically thinking that he may suffer a hell and ruin a potential big payday with Canelo in September. And as I said before, Triple G is completely exposed because he ain't about fighting for no belts. He just about fighting for mo- for money because now all of a sudden he got better mandatories and now all of a sudden they're not on the radar damn and shit. And, and he justified fighting the dudes that he was fighting. So now all of a sudden, but I, I told everybody, and I like being right, I told everybody when real competition came up to 160 that Triple G was going to be talking retirement, moving up. He was going to be hesitant about who he fights and all this shit because he let Abel Sanchez and Tom Loeffler back him into a box mm-hmm. because now – Based off the shit they were saying about that nobody goes eight rounds with him, okay, now we want to see it. Mm -hmm. And I laugh at the fact when Fred, you get attacked when you say he should fight the Chalos and the the guys like that, and um, they get mad and they keep saying what if they deserve, (laughs) what if they done to deserve a fight with Triple G, and Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out what did this dude do who haven't fought in two years and who ain't even a legitimate 160 guy oh and I'm gonna tell you something else uh Fred uh win lose or draw um Canelo gonna fight O'Sullivan in December mark my words December his get back fight yeah no, because they're going to find a way to keep him away from the... Ch- they gonna, look, Canelo and Triple G is going to try to stay away from those dudes. Well, Canelo don't have a... Well, Canelo don't have a belt. So, I mean, he can do, literally do whatever he want. Yeah, I, I know, but I, I know that, well, if he wins, wins this fight, he won't, he'll have one of those belts. Yeah, yeah, he'll do a voluntary defense. Yeah. Yeah, if he you know, beats Triple G, you know, he'll do a voluntary defense probably down in Mexico, probably, uh, you know, like at Minute Maid Park. Maybe at Dallas, Texas Stadium now, you know, like where Earl Spence is fighting, you know. Well, they got a, um, they signed O'Sullivan, Golden Boy signed O'Sullivan to a three. To a three-fight okay, deal? Oh, that. so it's similar to David Lemieux, you know what I mean? You know. Yeah, so basically, basically they'll try to throw O'Sullivan 
in the way to keep him from the guys like Demetrius Andre and yeah. Jacobs and Chomo. Yeah, you're right. I already, I'm just telling, I'm, I'm telling you this right now. Everybody that's listening, should Canelo have success against Triple G in September, he will fight either O'Sullivan or David Lemieux in December. Oscar already said that Canelo will fight in September and December. So oh, he did likely, September December. He said that. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So I'll put two and two together. When they said that O'Sullivan has a three fight deal with ESP, I mean, excuse me, with with Golden Boy, I said okay. Yeah, Canelo versus O'Sullivan in December, mm. and then. Everybody that's listening, mark my words. You heard it here first. Um, you heard it here first. Tail Ben is sitting in the barber's chair. Canelo. <laughs> hey, thank you for that tagline. I'm going to start using that. I never thought about that. Sitting in the barber chair. Yeah. Let me line you up real quick. I, yeah, I need a haircut. <laughs> I ain't got no hair to cut, so you you better off than me. <laughs> yeah. So I'm telling y'all now that's listening to this video. Mark my words, Canelo O'Sullivan in December, January. That's going to be the next fight. They signed O'Sullivan to a three-fight deal with Golden Boy. And then it, when, when, when the fight is announced, we're going to be pissed off because we're going to be saying, well, damn, what's up with Jacobs? What's up with, what's up with the other cats? Look, I know Oscar. He's going to try to milk this Canelo shit as long as possible. As he should, because he only got one of them. Yeah, well, look. It's, it's, look, it's, it's only Oscar has to be careful with who he puts yeah. Canelo in the Yeah, all ring. his fighters. All his fighters, because he only has one of each. You know what I mean? So he got he to gotta do his due diligence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this is, this is going to this is gonna, gonna go on for a while. They're going to... They're gonna try to like. Um, they're gonna try to milk this as long as possible. Maneuver around all those uh, 160 guys. It's it's just gonna be. You just go see Triple G and Canelo just freezing out a lot of these dudes. Mm -hmm. If they don't try to fight each other a third time, they will be. They will just try to circle around. They'll try to circle around each other. Don't be surprised if you hear. A Triple G David Lemieux uh, rematch pop up now. Triple G might fight Daniel Jacobs again because he's a he's the less of the three evils, you know. He might fight Daniel Jacobs again because Dan I have to admit Daniel Jacobs just didn't look that good. I wasn't impressed. By I wasn't impressed. Was, uh, yeah, he kind of flatlined, you know. And he he, 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 he hasn't looked good. Under Eddie Hearn, man, he knows the, the the two fights that he's fought under Matchbox. He hasn't looked that good. He needs to be more of a boxer. You know what I mean? Like all those exchanges he be going through look silly to me because, man, in the, up in the if you open up like that against Jamal Charlo, man, night night. His punches are so all them Charlos and them Earl Spence. Their punches are so straight. You you know what I mean? Like it's uh good luck. That's all I'm gonna say. Good luck. If you're gonna open up and fight like that, good luck. Because it's not in your best interest. I I hand by Chalo because I seen he wasn't able to defend that dude's right hand at times and he got hit. He got hit flush with that a couple of times and then he well, I can tell you this was Chalo's uppercut could do some serious damage to Daniel Jacobs. Now, look, at the end of the day, based off what I've seen so far, to me, the two best middleweights right now, as of right now, to me, would be Chalo and Demetrius Andre. But I wish dude would fight because it's time for him to get his ass back in the ring. Mm -hmm. Dorian Chanko, I need to see him more because, once again, here we go with another dude that got less than 13 fights in. So I want to see more of this dude. I really don't know where Dorian Chanko is until I see him against the uh, the Chalos and the Demetrius Andres and guys like that. Now he's so a so-called player in the game, but well, let's see how well.
That's interesting. You put Demetrius yeah, Andre I, in, in front of Triple G. I've been saying this for a long time. I think Demetrius Andre got the skill set to beat anybody at 160. But as I said before, me and you both know his inactivity is just a major problem. I yeah. said on several occasions that if Demetrius Andre fought uh, at least consistently three times a year, I think he would have been made the pound for pound list. But once again, it's okay. It's been since October the last time he fought, and mm. you haven't heard about him getting in the ring. He has a three fight deal with HBO. So now it's like, okay, what's going on? Sure. I mean, that, yeah, that promotional company that he with is 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 horrible. And I know he got a history of negotiating fights and then deciding not to fight certain certain time. But everybody that I talk to behind the scenes, and this is this, I've asked trainers, I've asked other fighters, who do you think is the best dude at 160? They almost all say Demetrius Andre. Mm. They always say him. Everybody. Mm. Everybody behind the scenes that I didn't talk to, from the people at the, the Mayweather gym to the people that I know, they always bring that dude's name up. Mm. And I'm like, okay, well, we want to see it. And so I'm like, could you please? Last year was the first time that Demetrius Andre ever fought, I mean in years, that he ever fought twice in one year. He had a fight in January, and then he had a fight in October. So now it's going towards it's May, and yet no fight. Yeah. And like once again, where is this dude? Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're absolutely right. So we'll see today. I think he gets him out of there in under five. You know. I, I... I'm, I'm 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 gonna be completely honest with you, Fred, and I know I'm gonna get called my usual triple G hater shit. He better not go the distance with this dude. If this dude manages to go it go past eight rounds with Triple G, once again, it will further prove to you that Triple G ain't what they made him out to be. It will further prove to the boxing public that this dude is a hype job. Mm. He's a yeah, he's a manufactured hype job. Oh, uh, Fred, if you see Dan Redfield today, he's there. Uh, you better tell him he need to go to a doctor. That dude is getting so big to where he holds his waist when he's when he's. <laughs> <laughs> he's when he's not when he's talking. That mean that. Get, oh, man, I'm trying to tell you, I, I I'm not a Dan Rafael. But I won't see that dude. That dude is extremely big. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just keep it 100, man. That dude, he knows. I mean, damn, Fred, how many of them damn uh, free lunches do you, can you go to, man? They don't even feed us good anyway. At those fake ass lunches, for those uh, press conferences. All they give us is them cheap ass. Uh, turkey sandwiches and shit with, without no mustard and then the, uh, and that fake ass uh, tea. Yeah, you're right. And, and I guess Dan Rafael just, just uh, I, I guess he takes advantage of the situation. Mm. He, <laughs> yeah, if you see dude, uh, <laughs> I, I actually guy, wanted to interview him yeah. yesterday about, um, because he called it a shit show. But I want to ask him about the IBF and what they're going to do. He not going to talk to you, Fred, because every time he he ran from he ran from me like three times when at Ward Cole. Oh, how time. you know? Yeah, he sure did. Yeah, he did. He did. He did. He did. He did. He sure did. He said, I'll be right back. And he never oh, you saw that on I camera? Heard. Or were you next to me? I was I was next to you, and uh, he did it to me. Yeah, too. yeah, <laughs> yeah. He did, he did, he did. I was gonna try and catch him yesterday, but it was it was 
it was so tight in there. Like, like, so, so I had to get where I can. You understand what I'm saying? So I, it wasn't like a big media room where I, where I could, where I could pace myself. You understand? It was just like, it was feast or famine. So I got stuck on Don, I mean, I got stuck on Don King. So that's what it was. So. I actually want to talk to Don King about some real shit now. You know, like uh-huh. some stories. Because because I'm not going to get to an 80 plus year old man. You know what I mean? So I just want to talk to him about boxing and like 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 growing up in the streets. Man, I want to talk to him about that shit. Because cause maybe it'll, it'll inspire like some of, some of our subscribers. You know what I mean? Like out there getting turning that wrong money into right money. You know what I mean? Stuff yeah, like that. But, you know, because... Yeah, he didn't want to share none of that right money. That's the test. But I'm going to ask him today. I'm definitely going to ask him today. Because at the yeah, end of the press the conference, we always have access to him. Yeah, he kept too much of that right money. And mm-hmm. <laughs> he didn't want to distribute it amongst his fighters, man. Mm-hmm. He, he, uh, he was the Harold Melvin of uh, boxing. Uh, so, uh, he stole from the Blue Notes, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you didn't you didn't hear that story about what he did to Teddy Pendergrass while he went solo. No, <laughs> so, t- t- tell the story. Tell the story. No, well, one of the reasons why Teddy Pendergrass went solo, you know, Harold Melvin was keeping was keeping all the money from uh, the Blue Notes, and uh, you know, Teddy Pendergrass was uh, at a point to where he was destitute for money, and he told Harold Melvin he needed some money. And, you know, Harold Melvin went in his room and um, gave Teddy Pendergraf like a couple of, like maybe a thousand dollars, but they said like he had like, like a shitload of money under his bed, like stacks. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So so I guess the same way Don King had his money drawer, Eddie, uh, um, Harold Melvin had his, um, had his uh, mattress, had his money mattress. Mm. Mm. That's old. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so, but I, I would like to hear Doug Keeg's uh, explanation on why all his fighters have nothing but bad things to say about well, he, him. Well, he'll never answer that question. You, you got to lead him. Like, why, you know, he, he'll, you can't ask him that question straight up because he'll just deflect it. Like, what are you talking about? I made everybody rich. What are you talking about? Julio Cesar Chavez got over 100 wins. Mike Tyson was the was the baddest man on the planet. What are you talking about? Pernell Whitaker, he had Bernard Hopkins. Didn't he have Pernell Whitaker too? Oh. Uh, I got a, I got No, a no, I don't think so. I don't know. I don't think he had Pernell Whitaker. I think, uh, I think, uh. Mayorga. He had Mayorga. He had, uh. Yeah, he had Mayorga. He had Tavares Cloud. He had, um, he had. Michael Dokes. Yeah, Michael Dokes. I don't know, but it's drawing a blank, but I, I. I, I'll have to sit back and think about it, but off the cuff, I, obviously, you know, he had a handful of fighters. So. I, I, I can't wait, man, and I can't wait to see. Um, if you see Tom Lawler say so, um, just ask him. Um, just ask him. Tell him one of your uh, friends said um, what time they go in the Foot Locker to look for Triple G's next opponent. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So tell them what truck. So tell them what truck driver they gonna fight after um, at, you know, after Canelo mm-hmm. or you know, no, I, I want Tom Lawler to answer to the public why is there hesitation to fight their mandatories now? Mm-hmm. Why all of a sudden they saying they're not thinking about Dorian Chaco or Jamal Chalo or Demetrius Andre? Sure. Why are they fixated on? A Canelo rematch. Mm-hmm. I just want I just want Tom Lawler to admit that they fighting for money. Mm-hmm. That's all I want them to admit that they. And I just want him to admit once and for all that they just was name dropping Andre Ward. That they never had no intentions of ever fighting him. Because if I catch some motherfucker, I'm gonna ask him. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm like I said, it's a lot of people that I got on my radar that. When I see them at Crawford at Crawford Horn, I'm gonna go bananas. I'm praying that I see Stephen A. Smith. Oh, you go, you gotta see him. He's gonna be there. 
I know. There's no reason I for you not to see him. Oh, I'm looking forward to see. Oh, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Uh, I, I'm look. I'm looking forward. That's gonna be. Hopefully, that'll be the epic interview that I need to put me on the map. So I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that. But Fred, you have a good time. I'm finna go for my uh, two mile run. Oh, appreciate. It. Do two and a half. I don't know if I got enough energy for a, a half. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. All right, man. I'll talk to you. All right, brother. All right. Appreciate you, King. No problem. Yep.